Hey guys, this is a short Axl Rose special brought by DuPont and Matanza Mafia Fedora on the Irrelevant Rockcast. And we've decided to do this today because it's all over Facebook, it's all over the internet. Apparently, Axl Rose may well possibly be the new frontman of ACDC, replacing Brian Johnson, who has to leave the band because of hearing problems, as we discussed in the last episode. Hashtag insanity cry. Um, when you found out the news, what were your immediate thoughts? Um, obviously, they're not confirmed yet, but these rumours, way well, <coughs> they may well be confirmed in the next um, few days, weeks. Yeah, what do you reckon? I reckon that this is probably going to be a massively controversial thing amongst ACDC fans in general because, well, we know their reputation as a live band and their consistency to put on a good show, don't we? We also know Axel's reputation as a performer and a frontman keeping promises to his fans. How do you feel that's going to go down? I feel like Axel Rose form-wise, may not be strong enough. And also, the timing is so weird because of the Guns N' Roses reunion that we don't even know the full story of yet. Yeah. So we haven't even, <coughs> we haven't even um, answered all the questions. Well, the, ba- the Guns N' Roses <coughs> haven't answered all the questions regarding their reunion. Yeah. And yet here's Axel potentially fronting ACDC. So when- he's already treading the line of potential things to... You know, he's got the choice of making all of his GNR fans happy, or he's got the choice of making a bunch of ACDC fans sceptical. The thing is, it will sell, <coughs> believe it or not. And I know tickets, have, you could say, have already sold, because these dates have already been confirmed and paid for by customers, fans alike. However, Axel Rose shows up hours late on stage, and this is something that we've discussed in our Guns N' Roses reunion segment in, I think it was episode three, wasn't it? Um, yeah, it was either episode two or three. Yeah, one of them. And it's just interesting how ACDC, in a, as a live <laughs> band, have always been, you know, reliable because they are on time. Yeah. They do put on a massive show. And Brian Johnson has always been vocally perfect. Yeah. And you've got now a guy who, you know, in many ways, people, people, um, fans alike have said, is a shadow of his former self vocally, physically. Yeah. And <coughs> also, let's be honest, it's so random. Axl Rose being the singer for ACDC is so random. It's, it's just as random as John Bon Jovi singing for, for ACDC or Meatloaf singing for ACDC or like... Or, yeah, it's... Like Sebastian Bach singing for ACDC. Or Andrea Bocelli, of all people. Actually, that would be the lesser of two potential problems, to be mm-hmm. honest. Andrea Bocelli, at least, is always consistent. Mm-hmm. And he's just a opera singer from Italy, so... Obviously, with Axel, you at least have a form slightly closer to what ACDC are going for. But either way, I don't see his style fitting with that band. Well, I'll tell you one thing that works. Well, two things. Sure. Rock and roll and big names. Um, so That's... essentially, essentially Axel singing for your band will fill stadiums, yeah, I... which is probably one of one of the reasons why, yeah. if, they, if they do have him, why they chose him. Yeah. But at the same time, as I mentioned before, this Guns N' Roses reunion, the timing couldn't be more strange. The timing, yeah, it is no more strange, regardless... And you know what's worse about this? Well, taking a look at Axel Rose, and taking a look at all the stuff he must be going to, try and get himself through to just get GNR back together. I mean, Slash and he was the biggest problem of them all, don't you think? In terms yes. of off-the-record problems? Indeed. Okay, wouldn't this present yet another problem that makes us un able to see Guns N' Roses getting back sooner because well they've already got as, as we know some confirmed dates that they will play yeah it's just is Axl Rose really fit enough to fill two stadium filling bands and like in all honesty, take his a look schedule at the you know look busy. at the state of that guy like Axl Rose he used to be the sort of guy that you would want backing you up in a fight not because he was overly physically imposing but because he knew how to hold his own 
and he had a rock attitude to go with his agility and on stage presence. But don't you think that nowadays he really is just a shadow of his former self and ACDC would be better off keeping Brian, regardless of hearing loss, just to keep on a good show? Do you know what I think? I think, um, you know, as I mentioned in the previous episode, that if ACDC like, don't retire, have a break, cancel the tour, get the fans their refunds, and go on like a two-year break to see how Brian's <coughs> doing, and if he's okay, they can tour again. Yeah, and I know... They did tour 2015, so the fans will be happy enough with that, you know? Yeah, and you know the gap there was in between Black Ice and Stiff Upper Lip. Um, and, yeah, it was about eight years, and the gap between Black yeah. Ice and Rock or Bust was six years. So, so we're used to them taking big breaks. A short one yeah, won't yeah. make a difference. And between Stiff Upper Lip and I think it was Ball Breaker was five years. So, um, yeah. And yeah. I think the Razor's Edge and Ball Breaker was five years as well. I can't remember the whole length, but yeah, ACDC commit to their craft now. Yeah, ACDC have effectively made like. Um, let me think. In the past 26 years, ACDC have made five albums. Yeah. So that kind of says it all, really. They do take their time. And um, Angus Young, who's obviously currently the band's leader, is a nice guy, and Axl Rose is a prick. So how does that work as well? I mean... Yeah, I mean, I did end up posting on Twitter a while back, bad cool Angus, but Angus is not a bad guy, he's just a guy that loves his craft, and the reason why they haven't cancelled the tour is evident of that, isn't it? And it's very self-evident that he is just a little schoolboy rocker, isn't he, that hasn't quite grown out <laughs> of his exhilaration phase yet. I'll tell you what, since Black Ice, it seemed like Angus is very money-driven, because of what we previously mentioned about um, well, ACDC not playing stadiums unless they have their own stage. Sorry, not playing festivals about having their own stage. Yeah, and because they would only play stadiums. Yes. Now. Like, they will only play venues like they did in Rio de Janeiro. Yes, or Wembley Stadium. <coughs> yeah. You know, they've probably been offered Hyde Parks and, like, um, like I don't know, maybe yeah. Hyde Parks and potentially, and, like, um, the O2 and... They've yeah. probably been offered all those things recently, and they're yeah. like, nope, we want stadium, we want the big one, yeah, we're easy, easy. It was, easy. Only, it was only just seeing them live at the River Play, actually, again, for the first time in a few years, that I realised Brian was actually wearing his hearing aid. I didn't realise that it had affected him as long ago as that, when it was that tour, but, well, it's like, don't you think that everything that's happening, it is better just to wait... Not only that, but because there isn't really a vocalist, regardless who they are. As we have mentioned before, we need ACDC to be on top form for them to even be considered proper ACDC. Otherwise, we're just going to say, we're not yes. going to boo, because that would just be sacrilegious. But we can't expect ourselves to jump up proud. Also, what currently is ACDC's identity... If I, they have I, Axel Rose as their vocalist. Probably just, you know... I mean, ACDC are too good a band to back Axel as a front man. Or Ang... Like, Axel is not a good enough front man to lead that kind of band. Um, I mean, that's, image, that, that's, yeah, that's not, subjective in a way. Yeah, but think about it. Shadow of his former self, and we're on about the here and the now. He is not fit to do that. There are fitter candidates in terms of many different categories. Admittedly, he is a great vocalist, but yes. ultimately, it doesn't yeah, sound but he like he's... he's a showman he's... as well. He may it... well be a showman, but he's not Brian Johnson. It's not the same voice, and... Well, we've touched on this before. If it's not the same person yeah. in certain aspects, we wouldn't want it. Yes. Um, Axel Rose... <coughs> Singing for ACDC is just as random as Brian Johnson singing for Guns N' Roses. It doesn't work. And I'm not saying in practice and in theory they are mutually to be considered yes. just as bad. They are interesting ideas, but they're interesting in the sense that we... 
like we don't think it would work but we are fascinated to see the image that doesn't mean we actually want that put into practice so that stuff can go wrong for sure and you know <coughs> i reckon if this does happen acdc should do what queen did um queen plus adam lambert or queen featuring adam lambert acdc featuring axel rose ACDC plus Axl Rose. Yeah. Because having it just built as ACDC with that logo, the band coming out, Angus playing the opening riff to Rock or Bust, or like Shoot to <coughs> Fill or something, and then seeing Axl Rose walk out on stage. It's just so weird. So weird. It's like it's a, it's like you're having a dream. And dancing in his tidy whiteies. Yes, and kilt. <laughs> <laughs> no, to be fair, the kilt design is good. I guess it does for ACDC because they're Scottish, as we know. Like. Yeah, Angus and Mal are both technically Scottish immigrants to Australia. Who As was Bon. Yeah, as was Bon. Brian is a Geordie, so he's right on the border of Scotland mm -hmm. from Tyneside. Or not specifically, but he's definitely from Dunstan upon yeah. Gateshead. Would Axel Rose be the first American to be in ACDC? Um, I wouldn't know in terms of all their members that they but may have But there's a good had. chance. He has a chance of being yeah. in that category, because I know that in between Chris, Phil, and then Chris again, they had a lot of replacement drummers come in. Yes, and the thing and is... And I don't know who, yeah. where they all came from, but Axel was the first significant member to be included from the States. That's right, and... um. ACDC featuring Axl Rose on vocals. Is that worth £85? Name-wise, and if it delivers, yes. But in terms of what could potentially happen, which is the band two hours late on stage, no, none whatsoever. It's a dangerous booking, yeah. you know, or a dangerous yeah. um, replacement. I mean, if we have to pair it up to a 7 to 10 average of what could actually be the outcome i would say it would be a seven to ten negative like yeah yeah we could be completely wrong here people axel rose could come out for acdc and completely kill it every night be on time and make fans go home happy and maybe think i was wrong but i do think there will be people on this european <coughs> tour wanting refunds if axel rose does decide um to um well if axel rose does yeah. get confirmed but acdc ACDC rep has said nothing official to announce regarding Axl Rose rumours, which means that the ACDC rep is not confirming or denying, but surely he would immediately deny it. Yeah, at the very least, he is confirming at this point that they are considering it. It's so strange. Yeah. So if it does happen, it will be the strangest replacement in my time of liking rock music. Yeah, same here with me. Like, like I'm, I'm trying to think of other really strange ones. Like, since I've been into rock and roll, like, there's been a couple of strange ones. I can admit, Matt Skiba taking over from Tom DeLonge in Blink-182 was a little bit odd, oh, but that seems to be working. Yeah. Chester Bennington singing for Stone Temple Pilots was a bit weird, considering he's Linkin Park singer. Yeah. But, obviously, he couldn't commit to two projects. He couldn't commit to two projects. Can Axel. <laughs> Now, that seems like a snowball's chance yes. in Hell's Kitchen, New York City. Well, the thing is, Axel, if Axel manages to pull off both bands successfully, he will be the hero of the year. But the thing is, because of his reputation, like, age is also not on his side. He's not 30. You know, How old is he again? Is he Axel Rose is in his early 50s, which isn't the end of the road, but... There are times when you think he's older because of what we mentioned. The way yeah. he sounds, looks, presents himself. How much of that is down to just... How much of his vocal technique do you think he still manages to possess? Because... I haven't seen Axel live yet, but I've... Well, yeah, I know, but has there been any live footage that's come up in terms of showing what he was before and after? Oh, yeah. Um, well, he can still hold it together to play a three-hour show. So you've got, so you got to give him that. Yeah. But there are plenty of bum notes. Um, but at the same time, there's plenty of energy, plenty of enthusiasm. And there are some songs that he does perform really well on. It's just inconsistent. 
His yeah. sets are inconsistent. Um, some people are there and don't really just want to see him because they're, yeah. you know, he's an iconic front man. But regardless, if it does get confirmed in a week's time or whatever, we will most definitely be talking about it here on the Irrelevant Rockcast. And yeah, as I mentioned before, we decided, myself and Matanza here, yeah. we decided to do this after it being all over our Facebook today. And we yeah. thought, let's just make, you know, a 20 minute piece on this. And so, yeah, any last things you want to quickly add? Yeah. Um, I need to get this off my chest. To all ACDC fans out there, all ACDC members, personnel, there is no shame in having a refund dished out to all the fans for having to do this. We know as much as anyone else here. We would rather see ACDC when they're performing at their best with their lineup that we actually are used to. And Brian Johnson is a godsend. Obviously, they cannot abuse his hearing. But a two-year gap isn't a long time to wait, is it? So we can patiently wait for Brian to maybe just get a bit better, monitor him, make sure that he actually recovers well, because I'm certain that Brian will have the commitment and the capacity to understand how severe this thing is. Axel doesn't know how to go all that often without finding something to complain about, and a lot of his complaints are just complete shite. So... Is there really any point? Would you would you want to add anything on that? I can't see it working. I can't How, see it working either. However, um, <coughs> as we know, in rock and roll, anything is possible. And Axel, if you do a good job, fair play to you. Mr. DuPont, out. Matanza, Mafia, Fedora, wishing you all a good evening and out.